Hey there guys, welcome back to Treadmill Review Guru. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Carbon T10 treadmill from Proform. So this is a compact folding treadmill. It's great for walkers, people who have maybe limited space, live in an apartment, um, and it's very affordable. So the Carbon T10 is part of Proform's Plus program, which means when you sign up for three years of iFit, they will actually send you the treadmill for free. So it's a great option for anyone who's on a budget or is looking for a treadmill that you can get right away and just pay for iFit as you go. So let's dive deeper into some of the aspects and features of this treadmill. So let's take a closer look at who the Carbon T10 is best suited for. So as I mentioned, this is a compact machine. It has a 2.5 horsepower motor. So we recommend it for walkers, people who plan to jog, or do intermittent running intervals, but not long distances. Um, that 2.75 horsepower motor is great for moderate training, but we don't recommend it for intense training. It's also really good for people who live in small spaces. As you can see, it has a really compact footprint and doesn't take up much room and it also folds. But the running surface is only 20 inches wide by 55 inches long. So for larger runners, those that have a large stride or someone who really needs a little more space than that, this probably isn't the best option. But if you're a petite runner or a walker who needs something compact, this is a really good option. Also, we recommend this to people who are looking for subscription content. Because this is part of the Plus program, when you pay for iFit for three years, you get the treadmill for free, which basically means that that subscription service is kind of built in um, and you're either gonna pay for it with the subscription or you're gonna pay for it with the machine. But if you don't want a subscription service, then this probably isn't the best option. So just kind of a quick overview of who the Carbon T10 is best suited for. Okay, let's take a look at the construction. So as I mentioned, this is a more compact treadmill. The footprint is impressively small. So it's only 35 inches wide. It really doesn't take up much space at all. I measured it to the top of the console is 57 inches high. Now this is different than what it says on Proform's website. Proform's website actually says it's 65 inches high. I didn't measure it that high. Our measurement was 57. I also measured the length and it comes out to 72. So you've got 72 long, 57 high, 35 wide. So it really is pretty compact. Um, your running surface, as I mentioned earlier, is 55 inches long and 20 inches wide. So it's about two inches narrower than other folding treadmills and about five inches shorter. So you do have a more compact walking surface. Uh, but one thing I really do like about this is you've got really nice textured side rails right here on the side with some deep groove texture. So when I step on and off, I feel like I have a really supportive foot uh, step on either side. Also, when I'm up here on the belt, this motor hood is really, really low. It's flush down right with the treadmill. So even if I'm walking up here, I don't have a problem hitting that motor hood, um, which is something that you can sometimes encounter on um, some of these treadmills. So I really like that Proform has kept that motor hood low. The step up height is only eight inches. So when it's fully flat, it's eight inches off the ground. When I lift it all the way up, it's only 12 inches off the ground. So it doesn't incline so high that it's going to affect your overhead clearance. It should fit in most rooms. It has a 2.75 horsepower motor. So it's great for walking, maybe a little bit of jogging and some running intervals. And it has a 10 mile an hour max speed. So you've got plenty of speed options. It inclines to 12%. So you've got um, incline options from one all the way up to 12. So lots of different functionality there. Um, and as you can see, it does fold. So if I just reach under here and lift that up, you can see that it's really easy to fold. It doesn't take a lot of arm strength. Pretty much anybody can do it. And you do have this nice um, grab bar there at the end of the base of the deck. Once it's locked, it really stays locked. Like it's not gonna come unlocked and drop on its own. And as you can see, you've got uh, steel uprights here, they're powder coated. And then down here, you have your support beams on either side. There are very small wheels here at the base of these support beams. So if I do wanna move it, all I have to do is tip it enough to engage those wheels and I can roll it where I need to go. 
Now with most treadmills, we don't recommend moving them a ton. You know, I mean, it still weighs 200 pounds, but you can move it if you need to. And it does have a, a hydraulic assist system. So once you release it, it will drop nice and smooth back down to your floor. You can see down here, you have your Isoflex cushioning. So a little bit of cushioning there in the deck, which is a nice feature. You have some bumpers right here on the side. I like how they're red because I just kind of think it makes it look nice. And you also have nice um, handlebar width up here. So when I'm on the machine, even though it's a little more compact, I still feel like I have plenty of space. One thing I do like about this treadmill is it will support up to 300 pounds, which is actually really impressive. That's the weight limit we see on some of the really high-end treadmills. So the fact that you get 300 pounds is really nice on this. And as I mentioned, it weighs about 220 pounds. So it's heavy enough to support you, but not so heavy that it would be an issue on an upstairs floor. Proform covers the Carbon T10 with a 10-year warranty on the frame, one year for parts and labor. All right, so let's take a look at the console. I really like this console. It's very clean and simple, um, which makes a difference to me when I hop on a treadmill. I don't want a bunch of clutter. So I like with the touchscreen consoles is most of the functionality is in the touchscreen. So it just kind of reduces the need for buttons right there on the console. Um, you can see that this is a 10 inch touchscreen. So it's basically the size of an iPad. It's very easy to see. Um, any smaller than that, and it gets harder to hit the buttons and see the metrics and whatever. So I like the 10 inch size. I think that's just kind of perfect. You can see you've got your metric display bar up here, incline, calories, time, distance, and speed. And then each one of these has just a different setting. You can adjust if you want to. If I don't want to see the bar, all I have to do is swipe away and it goes away. So then I just have the full screen, which is really nice. And you can see you've got really crisp graphics here. Um, this is so somewhere in Tanzania. So they will take the trainers on location so you're actually out there. You can hear natural sounds. Um, I'm gonna show you kind of how the volume works a little bit. So I can adjust the trainer volume. It's all through the park, and they do it all the year. Right there. But this time of year is when they're- talking. And then the master volume up here. Um, programs that have music to accompany them will also have a music option. Um, this one just has the trainer, but I'm gonna turn it up real quick so you can kind of get an idea. You can hear the water. And then down here on the screen, I also have volume buttons, which correlate with the ones on the screen. So you can adjust it here or up there. Of Eland and Eland are a neat antelope. They're the biggest antelope. You have a lot of um, you have a lot of volume on the screen. It's not a problem that you can't hear. The speakers are really good and they're centrally located. So right down here underneath the screen, you can see that I have an incline right here with a different button for each level of incline, which makes it really easy if I want to jump between different levels, I just hit that button and it'll take me up. So right now I'm on a flat incline. If I take it up to four, it's automatically gonna take it up to four and I can pull down that metric bar so that I can see it. Um, so that way I know where I am. I kind of like the metric bar because I like to know what my incline is and what my speed is. And then down here, I have the same. So you can see right now I'm at one mile an hour. I can quickly jump it up to four and that belt will pick up speed, jump it up to seven and it will go even faster. So these down here are full digit increments. We're gonna go one, two, three, whatever. If I take it down, so I'm gonna slow it back down to one incline and one speed, you have manual buttons down here on the bottom. So you can see down here, your incline is going to take you by 0.5. So it's gonna take me up to 1.5, then two, then 2.5. So the manual incline buttons jump you by 0.5. The manual speed jump you, buttons jump you by just a tenth. So it'll go 1.1, 1.2. So you can really get customized metrics in there um, if you want just a very particular speed. My favorite walking speed is 3.3 miles an hour. So I like that it, you can really customize it. So if I want to set it at three, oh, that was my incline. I set the speed at three, it's automatically going to jump it at three. But then if I want to find that 3.3 sweet spot for me, I just hit the manual button and it'll take it up and down. Now you can see down here, this little icon that says follow trainer, because you have automated um, controls, it will automatically adjust you to do either the natural terrain or whatever the instructor has preset. And the incline will follow kind of what your route is. So now that that's disappeared, I'm automated with the program. So as I walk along, it's going to adjust in up and down. It's gonna moderate the speed depending on how it's preset. 
If you want to override it at any point, all you have to do is hit um, your desired metric and it will drop you there. And then you can see that follow trainer icon shows back up, just so you kind of know. So you do have a fan um, and you've got four different power settings. There's low, medium, high, and then the fourth one is auto because I'm not really walking very fast, it's gonna slow it down a little, and then off. So you've got your fan controls there too. This is Bluetooth enabled, so you can sync with a Bluetooth heart rate sensor, um, and you can pair it with wireless headphones. So right down here, you'll see connect to audio device. If you wanna pair it with audio headphones, you can do that. Um, and if you want to plug your music into the speakers, there is an aux in port, so you can plug your music in and, and play your music through the speakers. So lots of different functionality. You can see you've got nice pockets here on the side. I can put my phone right there, or I can put a water bottle right there. And then you have a really wide ledge right here. So if I had a phone or an iPad or something else, you could set it right there. It's plenty wide. Even a book would work. It's not gonna be in your way. So I wanted to show you, um, iFit comes preloaded on the program. So you already have the database. You just have to access it through your account. Now, if you choose not to use iFit, you do have a few options. So right here, this is the screen that loads. Um, and if I wanna log in, I can log in and I'll show you iFit in a second. But if I wanna just start a program without logging in, this is what you're gonna get. Now you'll notice they have kind of a workout of the day right here. And typically it's something that's been filmed recently. It's one of their higher reviewed ones. Uh, you can see this one's in Switzerland, so I'll load that in a minute. But then as you scroll through, you can see all these are locked because those are all ones that you just need to have iFit with. There's one that you can also use. So if I come down here to browse, rather than have to go through and figure out which ones are available, you can just come right here and it says included workouts, okay? So all these workouts here are going to be included. You can see these that just say incline workout 10, incline workout nine. These are just graph workouts. Now the nice thing about this is you're not just stuck with these graph workouts. You do have the option of video workouts. The one drawback is that in order to access any of this content, you do have to have an internet connection. So even if you don't sign up for iFit, one thing to be aware of is in order to get the screen to function, you've got to have internet. So this is iFit. You can see that I'm signed in now. So this is one that I just completed, a hike through Switzerland. This is another one that I've just completed, so it will show me. But all of these are available. So none of them are locked out in iFit. You can choose for all these. And these are just kind of your highlighted workouts. And then over here, it'll have your weekly stats. Um, I've gone about six miles this week so far, 638 calories, elevation game, total time, things like that. If I come down here um, to browse, it will pull up the full library. So just like before where it pulls up the highlighted workouts, these are all your options. So, and, and they are kind of broken down. So you've got hiking and walking, challenges that you can join, uh, different, different challenges and they'll have different workouts within that challenge. Series also have different workouts within the challenge. So they may be specific to a trainer or specific to a location. So you can see you have a lot of options in here. It just keeps going and going. Um, and then they do have the on-air or the live classes that you can um, kind of look at your calendar and decide which ones you want to do. So these are all the ones that are coming up soon. It just kind of lists per day which ones are coming up. Um, and then for calendar, it will tell you what you've done, your different workouts. And you can also go into create. Um, and in Google Maps, you can create a route. So if there's a particular route here, it's taken us to San Francisco. If there's a particular route that I want to map out, I can then save it, do it later. Um, I'm going to exit. So you have that option as well. So you really have a lot of extensive um, training features in iFit, which makes this a really good option because you're gonna pay for iFit for three years and then the treadmill comes free. That's a really good deal on the Proform Carbon T10. Let's take a look at the functionality of the Carbon T10. So as you can see, I actually have it running in the background. It's very quiet. It's a little noisier as you got on it, and there's a touch of incline noise as that motor kicks in to incline and decline the deck, but it's really not bad. So right here, I have it inclined to a 1% grade, so it's just barely lifted off the floor, and it's running at one mile an hour. So you can hear that in and of itself, there's very little noise. The belt moves across the top of the deck very smoothly, so I don't get a lot of swooshing noise. I don't hear whirring noise from the motor. Uh, so the machine in and of itself is very quiet. If I hop up on here, as I mentioned, I do have these nice side rails, which I really like. They make it very convenient to get on and off the machine. And the low step up height helps as well. 
So once my feet connect with the belt, it connects with the deck. And you get just a little bit more of that swooshing noise just from the weight of a person on the belt, but still pretty quiet. So that was your incline noise. It only takes a second or two. Now it's going up again. Right now my speed is at 2.5, so it's a very comfortable walking pace. You can see that even if I move up close here to the console, that low motor hood doesn't get in my way. So that was the amount of time it took from go to go from a level four incline, now I'm in a level 10 incline. So I'll just walk for a second, once again, holding this comfortable pace of 2.5 miles an hour. And now it's gonna drop back down. So you can see how that automation works. It makes it so that you can just kind of walk along and follow the trainer and you don't have to constantly be adjusting things on the console. So let me walk just a little bit faster. You can watch kind of the decline of that deck, kind of how much cushioning you get as I move along. So I'm gonna move it up to three miles an hour. And right now I'm on a level six incline. So you can see it's really pretty quiet. Let me take it up to a level 10 incline, still at a three mile an hour pace. So there's your level 10. Takes just a few seconds to adjust in between inclines. I'll take it all the way to the top up to level 12. So there you go. That motor has to work just a little bit harder to get it all the way to the top. This is as high as it goes. So right here, the top of that deck is 12 inches off the floor. So this is as high as it will raise me. All right. I'm gonna drop that incline back down to a level three, and maybe we'll pick up the pace a little. All right, let's do just a light uh, running speed. So I'll do six miles an hour. Level three incline. Drop it at five miles an hour. Down to four. And back to three. So even if you pick up that pace, it still doesn't make much noise. So I'm just gonna hit stop real quick. We'll hop off. As soon as you hop off the machine, it's automatically gonna drop back down to that level floor. Um, you cannot fold the treadmill unless it's completely declined. So that is something to be aware of. If you wanna fold it, you've gotta make sure that it's all the way back down. And the other thing that people may not be aware of is your power switch is all the way up here at the front. So it's just something, um, if you've got this up against a wall, it can be a little inconvenient. I'm not really sure why it's there, but that's your power switch. And the console doesn't time out. It doesn't go to a black screen. So when you're done, you do need to turn it off. So in conclusion, there's a lot of things that I'm really impressed with on the Proform Carbon T10. This is a good option if you have limited budget, limited space, you need something smaller, or you're just a walker. Um, I really recommend it for people who are looking uh, to use iFit, because if you're gonna use it anyway, with this particular program, you get the machine for free. So that's a really good option. Um, it also works well because it doesn't weigh too much and it's really pretty quiet. You could use it in a shared space, uh, maybe a smaller bedroom or even an upper floor. We don't necessarily recommend it for long distances. Um, the motor will support running and walking, but if you plan to uh, run more than like six miles at a time, probably look for something closer to a 3.0 horsepower motor. Uh, and we don't necessarily recommend it for users that are extra tall or need a lot of stride length. Because the walking surface is 20 inches wide and 55 inches long, 
it's not quite as expansive as some of uh, a taller user might need. But in general, really pretty impressive. Uh, this is a treadmill that I would recommend to a family member or anyone who is looking for something compact and affordable. So if you'd like to read our detailed written review, make sure and check us out at treadmillreviewguru.com. For current pricing, click the link below. And as always, we want to hear what you have to say. If you have questions or comments about the Carbon T10, leave them down below. If you like our video, make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you again soon.